Tyneside has produced some massive names over the years. Just think of Alan Shearer and Paul Gascoigne, Peter Beardsley, Jimmy Neal, Sting, Cheryl Cool, and Deck, Eddie from Tyneside Life. Rubbish! But how much do you know about Tommy Fernan and his links to this bridge behind me here? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you knowledge beyond your wildest dreams. I'm going to talk a little bit about Tommy Fernan, but also I'm going to package up 1900 years of history of the Swing Bridge and the Tyne Bridges before it. So make sure you watch this video till the very end. It's coming up. Back again. Hello, Teddy from Tyneside Life. I cover football history and culture of Newcastle and the general Tyneside area. So if you're new here, and you'd like to receive a notification every time I release a video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So here I am just having a, um, a filming day on the quayside and I love just sitting down, having a coffee, relaxing with me dogs. Just got myself a coffee there from um, a little van there called Coffee on the Quayside behind that structure there, going by a guy called Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin. I run Coffee on the Quayside, based just next to the Swill Pavilion. Uh, we've been here since 2000. We, uh, we operate out of a Piaggio Appi, using a Fraschino um, espresso set setup. Um, we do everything espresso based coffee drinks and we've got hot and cold sandwiches. We're here every day, Monday to Friday, till half two. Talking of coffee, if you would like to help keep me fueled up when I'm out and about making videos, you can uh, kind of leave us a tip. I've got a, an online uh, coffee account. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And um, yeah, uh, any donation to keep me fueled up while I'm filming will be greatly appreciated. Right, I can't sit here all day. Let's check those bridges out. So, do you have any idea what that thing is behind us? Well, that's the what you call the Swirl Pavilion. It's both a sculpture and a building, and it incorporates the names of the all the different ports around the UK and Europe that was formerly served by the ships. And these include Rotterdam, Copenhagen, Hamburg, Genoa, Aberdeen, Antwerp, Malmo, London and Hull. So the first bridge built over the River Tyne was when the Romans were here. And it was built around about 120 AD and it was called Pons Alias, which means bridge belonging to Hadrian, alias being Hadrian's family name. And this bridge lasted for about 1100 years until it was um, partially destroyed by a fire in about 1248. And then uh, in 1250, uh, the new stone Tyne Bridge was opened that connected Gated and Newcastle. It had a, a wooden swing bridge on the Gated side with a huge tower, but also it had other towers. It had shops and houses on the bridge. So it was quite a, a hive of activity. And this went on till about um, 1771, where there was a, a flood and that particular stone bridge was partially destroyed. Um, I, I can't find anything on record, but I can't imagine it was anything to do with the ferocity of the flood. It, it collapsed probably due to the rudimentary engineering skills of the time. If you'd like to see more videos like this and be notified the moment I release the next one, make sure you hit the subscribe button. So for about 10 years from 1771, there would have been some trading difficulties. They would have had to use boats to ferry goods and passengers to and from the gated Newcastle sides of the Tyne. But in 1781, the, the brick Georgian Bridge was opened. That's the one that had the nine arches. So this was absolutely fine for about 100 years with the use of the old brick Georgian Bridge. But as the Industrial Revolution was starting to gain momentum, especially with the transportation of coal and then shipbuilding was starting, the, um, the, the, the bridge itself was causing some restrictions with trade because only small keels could get underneath so it became apparent that they had to go back to the drone board and realize that they had to build another bridge in order to facilitate ships getting uh, up and down the river Tyne so that's um, when in 1873 William Armstrong the legend he designed the current swing bridge which was opened in 1876. Now the swing bridge at the time when it was opened in 1876 it was the biggest swing bridge in the world of its kind and at its peak there was thousands of ships passing uh, up and down the river Tyne past the swing bridge to the Elswick shipyards and the armament factories you had the Dunson Staithes which was used for for large ships for the transportation of coal you can just imagine the activity that used to go on in the swing bridge was a crucial part of that whole setup. Interestingly, when they were, they were building the swing bridge, they found foundational timber beams um, in, in the Tyne, and that's been carbon dated, and those have actually been dated back to the original Roman bridge back from about 120 AD. So um, that just clarifies that the old Roman, Roman, old Rome, Roman bridge, that's the exact spot where the, the, the swing bridge is now. Also really interesting, I don't know if you realise, but either side of the swing bridge you'll see a stone arch. Those are the original stone arches 
from the Georgian Bridge. And on the Newcastle side of that stone arch, there are two engravings of uh, coat of arms. One on the, the northern side of the arch is the Newcastle coat of arms with the three castles. And the other side of the arch on the Newcastle side, the, the southern side, that has uh, another coat of arms engraved into it. So the second coat of arms is the Tyne Improvement Commission's coat of arms, and uh, it includes the three castles representing Newcastle, three crowns representing Tynemouth, a gatehouse representing Gated, and a boat manned by Roars with a sign, Always Ready, representing South Shields. And the motto, Servet Vigilantia Concourse, means United Vigilance, serves to protect. So, Tommy Fernan, what a character he's turned out to be. Uh, he was born in 1841 in the Oakwell Gate area of uh, Gated, which is quite a poor area at the time, which is roughly in between the back of the Sage and Gated High Street. He was actually born six years after Geordie Riley, who wrote the Blade and Races, so they come from the same area. He was born blind and partially paralysed, um, and he was orphaned age five. Obviously, as he got a bit older, he wasn't able to find any work and he ended up begging on the old Georgian bridge, right smack in the middle. He used to, stood, he used to stand rather, uh, rocking from foot to foot um, in, by a blue stone which marked the middle of the bridge. And of course that was later replaced by the swing bridge. Apparently he used to kick off big style when the swing bridge had to rotate to allow ships to go past and he threatened to make a complaint to the council because his, his earnings were being affected when he was begging. So he was quite a short character in shabby clothes I can imagine to look like a bit like a, um, a Charlie Chaplin type character. Uh, in a poem I read about him, he had splayed feet, but he also used to shout abuse at passers-by if um, they were taking the mickey out of him by dropping buttons or foreign coins into his box. So that's how he, he made his living for about 40 odd years. He begged on the Georgian Bridge, the Swing Bridge and the High Level Bridge. He becomes such a renowned um, person in the area, he'd become a bit of a Newcastle character. People come from all around to see him. They even made a picture postcard about him and asked him to open up a, a park in Deckham and Gated. He claims, and it's recorded, that he actually avoided being arrested by the police because back, back in those days there was strict geographical boundaries between the Newcastle police and the Gated police. So when he became aware of um, either the Gated or the Newcastle police coming to lock him up, he used to move a couple of steps either side of the bridge so he was on the Newcastle or the gates had said, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's, um, that's the claim. I don't know how we would know that if he was blind, perhaps he was tipped off, if you know, uh, just leave a comment below. But uh, yeah, what a character he was, and unfortunately he died on New Year's Day in 1907, aged 66, he, he collapsed in the snow on the gated side of the swing bridge. He was taken to a local workhouse hospital in Gated, and that's where he died. What a legend. Just made us think there in a hundred years time, if people see my videos and they look back and say, you remember that weird bloke with a baldy head walking the two border collies around Gated Newcastle? <laughs> well, that's all fascinating stuff there. So I'm off. I'm going to have a wander around the quayside, get myself into some bother and some mischief. So anyway, why don't you check out this video where I talk about a river underneath the city centre of Newcastle. Till next time, catch you later.